Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good day, and thank you for welcoming me to Reykjavik. As Deputy Premier of Nunavut, and as Minister of Transportation and Economic Development, and also the Minister responsible for the status of women, I am honored to be here today. I would like to start by thanking the Arctic Council Forum for inviting me to this event and for providing an international platform to raise awareness of issues that continue to affect our families and communities in the Arctic. Events like these are important in setting a, a stage to share our diverse strengths and promising practices and shows the importance of working together to address issues that affect all of us in the circumpolar region. Learning from one another is essential to the prosperity of our homelands and the future health and well-being of our children. I will be speaking today about mental health and resiliency. I begin by illustrating the core mental health factors in Nunavut. Protective sources of resilience and strength include strong cultural identity and cultural safety, healthy relationships, resilient communities, our long-term mental health. Significant work has been done to understand the impact of intergenerational trauma. We all know the numbers. Suicide rates in Nunavut, as we heard earlier, are 10 times higher than the national average, and family violence rates are 12 times higher. Last year, close to 600 people, including children, sought safety within the designated family violence shelters. What we don't always know, however, is that Nunavut Mute strive every day to build on the strength and successes that the territory has always and uniquely held. I will highlight a few of these initiatives from my perspective as minister responsible for the status of women. The Inuit Health Survey has consi consistently demonstrated the importance of land-based cultural activities for Inuit and activities that lead to mental health and wellness and resilience. And they will be culturally specific. Somebody's Daughter is a program in the Kuwaitan region that uses sewing and Inuit traditions to teach women about mental wellness. Ilisak Sivik, a community wellness society, hosted the Ang Night Retreat for residents of Clyde River and Kikitakjuak. Women spent time together on the land to reflect on the impact of social and environmental changes in their lives and to find ways to support one another in navigating these changes. Reclaiming the Whole Woman is a program that builds on the strength of Inuit women to create fabric and of learning and support that is grounded in Inuit ways of thinking, doing, and communicating. And Miksuk Camp, is sewing camp, is a pilot program for girls in Nihaluit to learn Inuit culture, learning to sew, and lighting a hudlik bringing together three generations of women. These examples demonstrate the strength of the individual and community initiatives that serve as a foundation for mental wellness, resiliency, and healthy relationships. They also serve as a reminder that the most effective programs and initiatives are locally introduced, culturally appropriate, and are based on Inuit societal values. This is why the government of Nunavut fully supports traditional ways of learning and backs proven community-based initiatives. Community members know what their communities need. 
The hardest work is being done now by our elders, counselors, mentors, and leaders. They are the ones who lead language and culture camps, Inuktitut preschool activities for youth, and parenting programs. These activities speak to the need of Inuit self-determination while supporting healthy individuals and communities. As a minister responsible for the status of women in our territory, I know that a holistic, inclusive, and multi-sector approach is critical as we improve our social indicators and health and well-being. Our government is currently focused on the expansion and development of comparable programming and initiatives that continue to target specific needs of our males in our community. Our intent is to contribute to community-based programs and their work to promote health, healing, and recovery from the impacts of violence, residential schools, and intergenerational trauma. Two examples I will share. The Akwet Wellness Committee has introduced young hunters. After school program for youth has increased school attendance, food security, mental wellness, transmission of traditional knowledge, and intergenerational connectedness. In Hall Beach, a men's group that was started last September has helped to decrease the occurrence of men entering the criminal justice system. With regular counseling and health healing by elders, it's found that the men and their relationship with their families are strengthening. As a government, we are currently organizing gatherings for men and boys across Nunavut to discuss and share promising practices like the examples given. To effectively support and further development such community initiatives, I strongly feel, I feel strongly about applying such a gendered lens to the initiatives and solutions for mental health issues, as shown in previous slides. Family violence is one of the key issues in our territory, which, address, which we need to address. The government of Nunavut is committed to working towards ending violence against women and girls by focusing on issues of violence. The complex issue of ending violence against our women and girls need the concentrated commitment of multiple levels of government and its partners to seek solutions to create safer communities for everyone. We prioritize family violence prevention and continue to actively address with the dedicated community social workers, community justice outreach workers, five family violence shelters, education, advocacy and outreach initiatives, and family violence specialists. We continue to support a national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls that considers Inuit and the territory's unique circumstances that, and rates of family violence. This focus on indigenous reconciliation and healing is a significant priority for the federal government that is being done. We value the work that is being done by the government of Canada that addresses systematic violence against indigenous women and girls, a demographic excessively impacted by violence, racism, discrimination, and exclusion from protection in the criminal justice system. In turn, healthy, supported communities continue to be our greatest source of strength and resiliency. Reinforcing positive mental health and well-being also requires us to acknowledge and address some of the highest levels of poverty, homelessness, food insecurity in the country. Building healthy relationships with each other and with each level of government is just one interlocking component as we work together to reduce family violence in our communities and empower everyone for generations to come. 
As minister responsible for the status of women, we must collectively strive to support gender equality in our families, our communities, and our workplace. Every day, people come together to lead the growth and develop our communities, our children, and our youth will be leaders and curators of tomorrow, and many of them already are. That is why it is so important that programming is made available to provide guidance and support from which Nunavut milk can grow, prosper, and ultimately heal. Thank you.